Right, in this video, we're going to look at the addition rule, and the addition rule is, is really and or probabilities. What's the probability of A and B happening? What's the probability of A or B happening? And so I want you to know this notation. If you see this symbol right here, that means the probability of A and B happening, of both A and B happening. And it's sometimes called the intersection of A and B. So this symbol, we refer to it as the intersection. And so an example would be that you know, you're rolling a die. What's the probability that your number roll is even and greater than 2? That's an and. So that we would use this notation, even and greater than 2. But we can also do an or probability. So it's kind of like the intersection symbol up down. Upside down, excuse me, and that's that's called the union. Okay, so that's the union of A and B. And so, so in this example, an example of this type of problem would be that you roll a die, and then what's the prob probability that the number is even or greater than two? So these are two different problems with two different answers. So, so know these, take some notes on that, point out, probably write down everything from this slide. I really want you to know the difference between those two. So let's look at, at an AND example. So it says, you examine the elective courses chosen by the students in your grade, and you determine that there are 18 students in athletics, 26 in fine arts, 6 in both, and 4 chose neither. So you want to find the probability that a randomly selected student was in, was in athletics and in fine arts. Okay? So here's what we're doing. We're doing the probability of A and B as the notation that we would use. So what I like to do is I like to get these little Venn diagrams going. You, you probably don't need this Venn diagram to answer this problem, but I think it's a good habit to be in because um, it just helps you visualize things. And so what it says is it says that there are six students that chose both athletics and fine arts, so they would go there. It says that 26 students are in fine arts, so that means everywhere in here is 26, and that includes the six that are right there. So that would mean that there's 20 students that are solely in fine arts and not in athletics. And we can do the same process here for, for our uh, athletic students. If there's 18 total, we know six of those are also in fine arts, so there are 12 that are only in athletics. And then you got four that chose neither. Well, now that you're looking at that, you would know that the um, probability, and I can use A and F for athletics and fine arts, and you're going to look at the number of successes out of total outcomes. Well, our, our number of successes is six, and our total number of outcomes is 12 plus 6 plus 20 plus 4, which is 42. If I divide a 6 out of the numerator and denominator, I think I get 1 7th probability. So um, that, that, that's a pretty easy example. Let's kind of kick it up a notch. One thing you need to know is sometimes that there, there is no overlap. There is, there is no and value. And so what we have is we have mutually exclusive events is what they're called. And they're events that have no outcomes in common. So these two events would be mutually exclusive because there's no overlap. These events are not mutually exclusive because there is an overlap. In our last example, these are not mutually exclusive because we had some students that chose both athletics and fine arts. So just, just another definition to know. For mutually exclusive events, the probability of A and B is zero. And it's impossible for both events to happen. And so for not mutually exclusive events, the probability of A and B is not zero. And so here's what we have. We have our general addition rule. I'm just going to feed this to you right now. We're going to try to uh, understand it a little better on the following slides. But what we have is we have that the probability of A or B, now we're talking about or, this addition rule is for our or situations, our union situations. That's equal to the probability of A happening plus the probability of B happening minus the probability of A and B happening. We're going to explore that in just a second. But if the events, oops, if the events are mutually exclusive, you can just use this right here because, I guess I deleted it, but because this minus probability of A and B would just be minus zero. Do you remember when we defined the mutually exclusive events? We said that the probability of A and B happening was zero. There is no overlap. So if you know your events are mutually exclusive, you can find um, the probability of A or B happening by just adding the probability of A plus the probability of B. But the bulk of the questions that we do in this video are going to be right here. Write this down. Know it, learn it, love it. Now, let's say you want to find the probability of rolling a die and getting a number that is even or, or greater than 3. So, so this example is here to help us understand why that equation on the last slide is the way it is. And so helps us to, to see this with a Venn diagram. So what we have is we have two events. We have event, we can call event A, the chance that your die roll is even, and we can have event B, that it's a roll greater than three. So, so let's kind of think about this. If, if, if I think of all the dice rolls that I could make, I know that um, we could have an even number would be two, 
And then we could have an even number. Four is also an even number, but four is also greater than three. So the number four is both even and greater than three. And the same thing with six. And then do you have any numbers that are greater than three but that aren't even? Yeah, we have those. We have uh, five would be one of those. And then um, it looks like we're left out with one and three are neither because one is not even, nor is it greater than three. And three is not even or greater than three. So, so now that I've represented this with a Venn diagram, I think this will help us kind of understand our situation. So for this, we say that the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. This is our formula that I gave you from the last slide. We call it the addition rule. Now, let, let's, look, let's look at these probabilities. So the, the probability of A is the probability that our die roll is even. And it looks like there's three ways to be even out of six total outcomes. So that's the probability for our first event. Now, for our second event, our probability of the number being greater than three, well, we have four, five, and six. So we could have, there's three ways for that to happen out of six total outcomes, okay? Um, but then you gotta think, oh, well, this four and this six, we counted those in this probability, but then we counted those again in this probability. These numbers got double counted. So what we have to do is we have to subtract out anything that may have gotten double counted, anything um, that is true for both. So if we subtract out two out of six outcomes, that would give us the solution we want, which would be four out of six or two-thirds. So I hope this shed a little bit light on why we subtract that. And the reason why we subtract this is because these, these numbers in the intersection get double counted in these first two parts. So you've got to subtract them out one time to get your probability. Now, let's come back to this situation, but now we're going to look at an or situation. So I, I keep coming back to this example. So let's, let's bring in our little Venn diagram. So this one says, uh, I'm not going to reread it, but now we're finding the probability that a randomly selected student was in athletics or fine arts. So let me kind of fill out what we know. It says... Um, we have our athletes, and there were 12 of those. There were six here, there were 20 here, and there were four that chose neither. So if we're trying to find the probability they're in athletics or fine arts, we can use our addition rule. So we know that the probability of athletics or fine arts, I'll use A for this event and F for this event, would be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of F minus the probability of A and F. So let, let's, let's look at this real quick. So the probability of A, what's, what's the, um, what are the odds that if I, I randomly select a student that they're in athletics? Well, that would be 18 out of 42 because there are 18 athletes out of 42. And then let's find the probability of fine arts. And so you look, well, it looks like there's 26 students in fine arts out of the same 42 total. But... If we're, we're actively thinking through this problem, we recognize, oh, these six kids right here, they got counted in this category, and they also got counted in this category. So we have to subtract the students that are in athletics and fine arts because they got double counted. And so if I do that, it looks like, um, I believe that is 38 out of 42, and that would simplify to 19 out of 21 if you wanted uh, the simplified fraction, and that's roughly 90% chance. So it looks like you got 90% of your students in one of those two electives. Now, you were drawing a card at random out of a deck. What is the probability that you draw a red or a five? I would strongly encourage you to try this one on your own and, and see how you do. But I'm gonna go ahead and jump into it. So looking for the probability of picking a red or a Five. Well, that's going to be equal to the probability of drawing a red card plus the probability of drawing a five minus the probability of drawing a red five. And so the probability of us drawing a red card, if you know your uh, deck of cards, you know that there's 26 red cards out of 52 total because uh, there's the diamond suits and the heart suits that each have 13 cards. So you got basically a 50-50 chance of getting a red card. But then you got to add all your fives. And so we have four out of 52 cards that are fives. There's one five for each of the four suits. 
And then we got to subtract the, the cards that were double counted because you can see all of our red cards are counted here, okay? But then we have some fives that were double counted. Not all the fives were double counted because two of these fives are black cards. But two of these fives are red cards that were included in this category. The um, five of diamonds and the five of hearts already got counted. So we're going to subtract those out. If I do that, we end up with 28 over 52. If I wanted to simplify that, you can. You get 7 over 13, which is roughly 54%. All right, we're doing great. We only have two slides left. So on this one, it says using a standard deck of cards, find the following probabilities. What's the probability that you draw an ace or a king out of um, out of a deck of cards? Well, um, this one's pretty easy because you, we would say that it would be the probability of ace plus the probability of a king minus the probability of an ace and a king. But if you're thinking about that, you're like, oh, there, there are no cards that are both aces and kings. These are mutually exclusive situations. And so what we have is the probability of drawing an ace is 4 over 52. You add the probability of drawing a king, which is another 4 over 52. That's just going to give you 8 cards that would be successes out of 52 total. If you wanted to simplify, that would be 2 thirteenths or roughly 15%. Okay? And then now let's look at drawing an ace or a heart. Well, your probability of drawing an ace, we've talked about that, there's four aces out of 52 cards total. Then you're gonna add your probability of drawing a heart. There's 13 hearts out of 52 total. But where you gotta be careful is there's one card that is both an ace and a heart, and that's the ace of hearts. So that ace of hearts got counted in this category and in this category. So let's subtract out the ace of hearts. So it looks like you would, by doing that, you would have 16 over 52, which is roughly 31%. All right, here is our very last slide, okay? Let's say a kiosk has movies for rent. Records indicate that if a customer is selected at random, the probability that the customer rents an action movie is 0.57, and the probability that the customer rents a comedy is 0.38, or 38%, and the probability that the customer rents both an action and a comedy is 0.15. So let's find the probability that the customer rents only an action movie. Uh, so we can do that first. Um, what I'm going to start with is the probability that they, they rent both. And so we know that there's a 0.15 uh, or a 15% chance they rent an action and a comedy movie. And so um, here's why these Venn diagrams are so helpful is because if there's a 57% chance of renting an action movie, but a 15% chance that they're also running a comedy, then we can do 0.57 minus 0.15, and that's going to give us that there's a 0.42% chance that they're renting only an action movie. So like this part of our Venn diagram right there shows there's a 42% chance that they get an action and only an action movie. And then what about them renting a comedy? Well, them renting a comedy is kind of the same idea. We know that um, it says there is a 38% chance or a 0.38 probability that they rent a comedy, but there's a 0.15% or a 15% chance that they get an action movie too. But if I subtract those, you end up with 0.23. So the chance that they were in a comedy but not an action movie is 0.23. And that's your answer to the second one. Now, what about the chance that the customer rents a movie that is neither action nor comedy? Okay. Well, what we got to think about, and this is bringing in a rule that I haven't talked about in a while, but it's the idea that all your probabilities add up to 1%. Okay, so what we have here is that you got an action, you got both, you got comedy, and this plus this plus this plus the, the people that rent neither should add up to one because that's all of your outcomes. So what we do is this. We got our action folks. We got our both folks. We got our comedy folks. And then that's, that, that all is going to be 0.8. That means 80% of our people are wrapped up in these categories right here. So if you just do 1 minus 0 0.8, that means there's 20% of people that are not renting those and renting something else. Who knows what they're renting. But that's pretty much all you need to know about the um, addition rule. This last slide doesn't use a whole lot of the addition rule. It's more just um, kind of practice with these Venn diagram type problems. But have that addition rule memorized and you'll be good to go.